So in this video, I'm going to be talking about how I resolved a problem on a 3D model from a project that a guy designed a portable battery tray for a Starlink Mini. Uh, and you can kind of see that here. Um, now the issue was there's a sacrificial um, support that they designed into the design because it actually prints kind of at an angle like this. Um, now here was the very first print. I printed it in black on the first one and white in the other one. This already has the support removed, but you can kind of see that it sagged right here and I got some, some kind of lousy print. I don't know if the camera's picking that up. And the reason for that was in the mesh, um, this part right here um, was separate and you can see all these little tiny little um, like tick marks right there, those didn't exist in their design. They did exist um, in the side, and it's kind of hard to see. I don't know if you can kind of see that in the side. Uh, and that worked great, but they didn't have them up here at the top. And so I ended up having to add those in the top to support that vertical edge. So I'm gonna show how I went about doing that in this video. So let's take a look. So like mentioned in the intro, this video is about the Starlink Mini battery tray from Everlanders. Um, I'll go ahead and show, um, this is his webpage here on YouTube, um, and this is the little tray that we're making. Also, I'm going to be pointing to another video uh, talking about like creating these little notches. Um, this is from Slant 3D. I'll go ahead and link both of these videos in the description of uh, this video. So I'm going to be bringing in the 3D model or the mesh file from Everlanders. So let me just go ahead and insert that into the design. And here is that mesh file. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that it kind of comes in at some weird, funky angle. And that kind of makes things confusing to me. So I like to reorient it to make, you know, front, top, right, make more sense. So to do that, I'm going to go into mesh and say direct edit, click on my mesh, and that opens up this new command called mesh align. And now I did a video on this a couple months ago. I'll go ahead and link that at the end of this video. Um, so I'm gonna say mesh align, and I want that flat face there to be aligned with kind of like the bottom plane. So you can see here's my origin. So I'm gonna pick on that bottom plane there I'll do a quick preview and you can see sure enough it, it lined that up but it's kind of upside down so I'm going to hit flip and now that face is lined up with that bottom plane. I'll repeat that and say I want like the side plane lined up with the side plane there. I'll do a quick preview and sure enough that looks good. So now front looks like that right looks like that totally makes sense and here you can see this sacrificial support that they included in the 3d model and you can see the little saw marks but you'll notice that it's missing along the top um, really quick i'm going to jump into my 3d print slicer here's the original model you can see you know sure enough it's missing those little um, saw marks whatever you want to call them um, and then here is the modified one that I created where you can see that those exist. And that just supports this edge right here to keep it from sagging. In fact, you can kind of see um, this says, you know, don't worry, it's sacrificial. This is that whole section that's going to get removed uh, after the 3D print is complete. So we need to add in those little sawtooth marks. Now to do that, a lot of people would think, okay, I need to convert this into a 3D model. That way I can modify that 3D model to add in those little sawtooth marks. That would take a lot of time, a lot of effort, and potentially would probably fail. So instead of converting this to a 3D model, what we're going to do is create the sawtooth as 3D models and convert them to meshes and combine them to this mesh. We're going to leave this as a mesh. So one of the first things I like to do is to make a copy of this. So I'm going to right mouse click, say move, copy, create a copy, and just leave it right where it is. And then let's just go ahead and rename this one to original. 
And the reason I do that is because, for example, if I wanted to put a sketch, I'll go ahead and turn off um, that copy. If I wanted to put a sketch on that face, I really can't do that. So I'm going to say place a sketch. You'll notice I can't click on that face. So it needs to be a solid model for me to be able to do that. So by creating this copy, I can come in here and say convert mesh. Now, one of the options is faceted. We don't want to do prismatic. That's where it physically tries to convert it into a 3D model. Faceted, what it's basically going to do is just convert all of these faces into 3D faces. So I'm going to go ahead and say OK. And you'll notice that it just turns these into a, a solid model. You can see that by the icon. And now these are faces and edges and points that I can actually catch to. So for example, I could take measurements. I could say, you know, how wide is this? So I could go from like that point there to that point there. And we can see that it's almost like six and a half inches wide. And now I could come in here and say, create a sketch. And it'll let me pick on that face, for example, where it wouldn't let me do that with the mesh. So that's one of the first little tricks that I do. Okay, now I'm gonna take a look at this section here. I wanna create my little um, saw teeth right along here. And what I might do is actually, I wanna create a, a sketch kind of vertically right here. So I'm gonna do plane at an angle and I'll just click maybe like that edge there and rotate that to be 90 degrees. So we can kind of see how it's gonna support this surface here and sit on this ledge of this support feature. So I'll go ahead and say OK. And then I can create a sketch on that plane. The next thing I want to do is project some geometry. So let's go ahead and hit project. And I'm just going to zoom up. And I want to grab, for example, and it's a little kind of hard to see at that angle. Whoops. So I'm going to grab, for example, that line there and maybe that line there just to get the total height. And if we turn off that body, we can kind of see we're going to fill in that area there. The next thing I want to do is kind of match the same size of this. So I'm going to do some quick measurements. So the total length of this, I can kind of see this if we kind of drew a rectangular shape. So if I measure from here to here, um, that's about 0.082. So I'll create a rectangle that's 0 0.082 um, in width. I'll turn the body off to make it a little bit simpler to see. And I'm just going to draw kind of a rectangle out here in space. But I do know that I want the total length to be 0 0.082. And I also want this to be in the middle of this line. So I'm going to say midpoint, that line to that line. And then the overall height, I want this line here to be collinear with that line there. So I just kind of created a quick rectangle that's the exact size of that sawtooth. Then I'll just do a quick three-point arc that starts there, ends here somewhere, and then creates kind of a nice oops, tangential arc like so. And the last thing I need to know is like how wide is that? So let me go ahead and grab that measurement really quick. So I'll turn this body back on, do a quick inspection here. Let's just measure from here to here, 0 0.006. Okay, so what I can do now is create another quick dimension from here to here and make that 0 0.006. And now I have a fully constrained sketch with this little sawtooth arc. Okay, then I'll go ahead and turn on my original mesh. Uh, actually, I think I'll, I'll keep this guy on. Let's do that for now. Grab the profile that I want and extrude the distance that I need to go. So I'll just start to extrude like so. Now you'll notice it's kind of cutting in um, that's why it's turning red. I'm going to change that to new body. And let's just go maybe to uh, that point there. Uh, or let's see, that goes a little bit too far. Let's go maybe to 
Let's just do maybe 0 0.02 in thickness. And I'll say OK. So we just created a singular little sawtooth like so. Now what I'll do is create a pattern of this. So what's the body? I'll click that guy there. What's the axes? Actually, I should keep the other <laughs> measurable one on. So I'll just click on like that horizontal axis right there. Start to drag. And we can kind of see a visual preview. Now, I'm going to change it from one direction to symmetric. And what that's going to do is go in both directions. And then I can increase the quantity. So you can kind of see as I increase the quantity, it allows me to add more of these teeth. Now I'll go ahead and drag all the way kind of to the end here to support as far as I can. I don't want to go too far because then it kind of comes out from underneath where the model is, which doesn't make sense. So I'm just going to kind of go back like so and then change the quantity to where I think there's enough support. So let's just do maybe um, 11 in this case. So we can kind of see it going all the way across like so. And I'll say OK. So we now have all of these individual bodies. I don't need this anymore. I'll go ahead and turn my mesh back on. Now here's kind of where things are going to be a little bit different, where we jump into the mesh and we have our original mesh, but then these are bodies. And if I wanted to 3D print this, I need them to be all together. They can't be separate. So I'm going to come in here and use this tessellate command. And it's asking, what is the body? So I'm going to select all of these and say, OK. And notice how they no longer have the body symbol. These are now meshes. And if I zoom up, we can see that they look different. Then I, I want to combine these together. So under the Modify menu, Combine. Now here's the trick. There's actually four commands in here. Whereas typically you see in the regular combine command, you see join, intersect, and cut. This one also has one called merge. And this is the one we actually want to use. You don't want to use um, join in this case because it's going to try and mathematically join these to all of this, the rest of this mesh. And that's mathematically very complex. Merge basically is like, just glue these together, just merge them together. So that's the command I want to select first. Then I'm going to say, what's my target? That's my target. What's my tool bodies? I'm going to go ahead and select all of those. And I don't need to keep the tools. I'll just say, OK. And notice how quick that was. And we are all in one mesh. And these are merged together. And we just basically converted a 3D body into a mesh into a mesh. And now I could come in and say, let's go ahead and 3D print this. I'll go ahead and say OK. It brought up my slicer. I'll go ahead and make that a little bit smaller. Um, so you can kind of see here is our new design with those added little sawtooth marks. And that's going to help support that edge. So hopefully you saw how easy it was to take an existing mesh and modify it using regular 3D geometry and converting that into mesh geometry, which allowed us to take a 3D print that looked lousy like this and turn it into something that looks nice like this. Hopefully you learned something new and we'll see you on the next video. I hope you learned something new and enjoyed that video. If you did, make sure you like and subscribe to be notified of upcoming videos. If you need help learning Fusion, visit my webpage at cadedllc.com. And as always, have fun learning Fusion.